because what I did was I wanted to do something that I loved, and because I would have been really bored, uh, really bored of doing something with agriculture or something with I don't know paint drying or or, or cutting the grass. Uh, so I thought, what can I do every single second of my day and make sure that it's the best it can be and not get bored with it? And that's music. I love music so gosh darn much. Every type of music. So I went to them and I thought, hey, what, what if I took the long form interviews that we do on air and turned it into a podcast with just like my favorite artists? The whole idea was to go to free shows, by the way. That was, the whole idea was like to go to these artists' place and speak to the people that I admire. Uh, we've had people like... Um, Ingrid Michaelson on the show and everything. No, so did, did everyone go to the, the page and search it? Now, if you go up, click subscribe, that would be wonderful. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. So, subscribe, you can, you, you, and if you like it, you can keep subscribing to it and listen to it. Thank you so much. And uh, if, you, if you like it a lot, you can also like, rate and review it and, and say, hey, this is really great. Or if you don't like it and you want to say something bad about it, you don't have to just go subscribe. That's fine. <laughs> but that's my podcast. That's the thing that I wanted to do. So I, so everyone else here, you guys have your podcast there. And what, what steps are you taking to make it explode? Like, what are you doing? Social media. Social media. And what's the first thing that you were like, all right, we got our podcast going on. What's the first step for social media? Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's good. What about, do you guys have like a website? No, not yet. The, well, we just started oh, it like a couple months ago. So awesome. We're still trying to get it. Around on social media, I'm spreading the word. Anytime I'm at like a party or an event, I always tell people when they ask me what I do, uh, what I'm going to school for, I tell them I have a podcast, they get intrigued by it, I tell them what it's about, and then they want to listen to it. Uh -oh. Exactly. It's it's spreading the word. I mean, look at guys like Mark Cuban who got their ideas off the ground. What did he do? He believed in his ideas, and every time he met somebody, he said, hey, I have this idea, you have to be a part of it, because it's, it's, it's this awesome. And that's how I feel about this, this podcast and WGN podcasts in, in general. Um, so we did that. So if you, if you saw on the, on the listing and stuff, we have a lot of EDM artists. We've had the Chainsmokers on. We had, um, like, what else we had? Al Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes. We had uh, Andrew WK, all these other random guys. Mm -hmm. So remember, the risk takers are the ones who make it in the business. So if you have an idea, even if it sucks, just say it, because it's, it's the best thing you can do. Um, OK. So here's some ideas for podcasts. Uh, if you want to create your own podcast, and hopefully this is inspiring you just like, you have an idea, you have something passionate you're about, you know, and you want to be in radio, this is the cool thing you should be wanting to do. You should want to tell the entire world about it. Because if you put your face and brand yourself with that certain thing, like, what is, what's your podcast about? Um, like, guy, <laughs> like guy code, pretty much. Guy code? Our yeah. target audience is like... Guys in their early 20s, teens, and stuff like that, just talking about what normal, like, if you and your friends, what you guys are talking about, like cars, working out, girls, sports, whatever, that's basically what we talk about. I really like that, because I listen to those podcasts all the time, secretly. Listen know. to the bro down. <laughs> yeah. The bro down. Yeah. yeah. The bro it's down. funny. It's hilarious. Hilarious. Yes. Quick question, sorry. I was um, scrolling through your podcast list. Mm -hmm. I follow the Growlers, um, and you, I guess you had them on your podcast. Yeah. But I remember on their Instagram, they were like outside the WGN uh, building. Yeah. And so that was that was you. That was our podcast. That's awesome. That's yeah. Cool. You like the Growlers? Yeah, I love the Growlers. Oh, uh, we. Uh, that was one of the our highlights because we got oh, them really? when they came from LA. We had them in studio and played and played a show for us. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's crazy. They do that all the time. And uh, when they were last year in Chicago, I didn't see them, but I saw them when they were. Um, or was it uh, in St. Louis, and then the time before that, they were in Chicago. Did they perform like everything off of Chinese Tomlin? Yeah, yeah, Chinese uh, two. Yeah, um, so cool. yeah um, I can't remember which songs they played, but they did that, and then we we talked to them for an hour. So it's like you're talking. You you have the ability with with your media background to talk to your favorite artists for an hour and ask them the questions you've always wanted to say, because you're interested in them. This is where the whole radio media shift is going into podcasting because mm -hmm. eventually everything is going to be online and then and then people want it immediately so it's like I'm interested in the growlers a second so boom pull up sound sessions go to the growlers interview and we talked about like their girlfriends like their life they had a guy named DJ Dot Johnny Basil where he was like just doing this and I was like what the hell is this guy doing over here he was giving them positive energy they had a guy like this? Just, yeah yeah, yeah, just like, really yeah. yeah. it's so trippy <laughs> so how do you so how do you like create that good content how do you do that kind of stuff 
Um, I'll tell you my, my steps that I tell every single WGN podcast to do when we create. Yeah, everyone just, you know, get those positive vibes going. <laughs> all, the, all the good things that we have at WGN, I give them this layout. So this is like what I tell every podcast that, we, that, we, that comes to our door. So number one, have we created a great logo title description? Um, the description has to have strong keywords, like the bro down, it's awesome. Um, have we created a great opening theme? Do you guys have a theme song that you guys do? No, we just uh, open up with a song. Perfect. Like, and then we have a closing song and a middle song. Yeah, that we do. That's what, and that's what you do. You keep them entertained like all throughout it. Yeah. Um, it draws people in and you gotta, you, they need to know what your story is about in the first 30 seconds of the podcast too. So it's like, boom, I, I do this podcast, it's about it's about meeting girls, it's about working out and riding motocross. Boom, and that's it. Um, have you created a social media tag at the start and end of the show to remind, to remind listeners to review, share, and rate our podcast and view others on our site? So that means like, hey, what's up? This is Michael with Motocross Monthly. Um, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Have you guys checked, had a second to rate our podcast on iTunes? We're also on Stitcher, SoundCloud. Um, Spreaker, everything. So make sure you check it out. Also, here's our episode. Boom! And then it's right into music. Do we have a segment-based show with intros and compelling music? Uh, interesting topic and up-to-date up -to news? Important. Um, the right production transitions. So you guys are doing some production, like audio uh, production and everything here too? Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with audition, make sure it sounds you know clean and you can mm -hmm. hear those fade-outs and everything. I can't listen to a podcast without listening to you know the levels that they have, and I'm like, oh, that level's kind of off. Or hear the like edits that they make when um, people are going into a story, and then all of a sudden it just sh shuts off. Yeah. Make sure that everything sounds as clean as you can, because the ear can really pick up on a lot of that interesting stuff. Uh, are you reaching your key audience and sharing an interesting voice? Do a generalized conversation on today's. So I got I got to reword that sentence. <laughs> it's way too long. Um, and that basically just means, are you on Facebook? Are you, are you reaching your, your core audience? Like, are you telling people that you want to reach them? Like, you wouldn't go to an 80-year-old man. Maybe you would, actually. Or an 80-year-old woman who just, she didn't want to pick up chicks. So, maybe she does, though. I don't know. It's a great world. But make sure you're reaching your key audience, though. That's the thing. Because the, the more you build up that brand, and the more you build up that audience, the more listeners you get. There you go. That's it. That's what That's I heard. Cool. So, does anyone have any uh, questions, comments for Mr. Hyderman? Hyderman. How, long have, you, how, long, have <laughs> how yes. long have you been working at WGN for? I've been working there. I just had my like two and a half year, um, like anniversary there. So. Yeah, nice. it's been two and a half years. Nice. Yeah, but before that, I was in I was I was in my student radio station, and I was I was doing everything there. I was at Radio DePaul, and then I was at um, other places. If like you that. don't mind me asking, how did you get the job? At how did you? Yeah, how did you go about getting it? So, like mm -hmm. like I said before, it was all about applying to a thousand jobs a day. Uh, I was working at, at Citibank for yeah. a year, mm -hmm. and I would, every day I was just you know typing on the computer, and I would I would be. I have the computer applying for radio jobs. Nice. Like every, every I did that too. It's what I wanted so bad. And what it came down to was I applied to WGN maybe for the past six years before then. Uh -huh. And then one one day I, I sent an email at like nine o'clock at night just with my layout and what I had to offer them because I, I really had no experience. And they're like, yeah, come in for an interview um, for this intern program we have. And I was like, gosh. So it's all about the timing, and there's no better time than is every second of the day to apply to those jobs. That's what it's all about. You just need to keep going and get those jobs. So that's that's why I got it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about the interview and like the questions? The interview. And the questions. Um. So when I went in for my internship interview, they uh, I I, I met with a girl and she asked me about what we're going to school. Um, what kind of aspirations I have for radio. They, they love asking you, why are you into radio? Because like, it's not really the TV, it's not as fancy as most of the other things. And, and what makes you want to stay in radio? And why, you know, why would you be a benefit to the station? So make sure you tell them that you're, you're always going to be on time. It's a, so it's three Ps. That's so important. I, I read that and I was like, that's 
dead on because if you're punctual, you're professional, and then you're always present, then you'll probably get the job. Yeah, and and you know you just got to show them that you're that you're there to do what they want to do. So that's kind of it. But when I after the internship though, I needed to go in for a second job to get my producer position, and for that it's just you you got to just wait for that job to open up. And so if there's like a studio side producer position, grab that and just talk to your boss and say, hey, um, I saw this job opened up and I think I should I should do it. So, Yes. So you're a radio producer at WGN, right? Yes. Who do you produce for? What shows? I, I was the afternoon drive producer for Rocon. I um, I fill in um, for throughout the week. So I've I've done basically every single show there. So Steve Cochran, um, Kathy and Judy on the weekends I do them. I do the agricultural business shows for Orion Samuelson, um, who's my homeboy. Hey. <laughs> Is Rose not over there anymore? No, Rose there. Oh, he's there. Okay. Yeah, I think he just got his uh, contract extended. Too, okay, so I thought he was yeah. yeah, he he's there. Um, I produced Justin Kaufman's show, who was uh, the producer for WBEZ for like 20 years. He has a new show there. Um, but the main thing that I do is I produce all the digital content for the podcast that we have now. So that's it. Yes. Uh, is there? Do you have any any experience with video or webcasting or anything like that? Is, is that a growing or dying or anything like that? Is that yeah, we, um, at WGN actually, we stream every single show live 24-7. Um, so you can go to WGNradio.com and see how they're streaming it. But for for the podcast portion of it, we just got a brand new production studio with, with video at the station. So we're moving into a lot of that um, video production. So when we are doing our podcast for WGN Plus, Sometimes well, we have a show called Tomorrow's Business Today, where interviews uh, in, start, like local startups here in Chicago, and he'll videotape the entire segment. And he works through this company called Mavly, where they put together um, video segments for the podcast. So it's like not only will you get to hear it on your phone, you can watch it on your phone as well. Video is immensely important now, and that's what some of the old time radio folks don't really get yet, because it's like because. Um, do you guys remember when Howard Stern was on E? Yeah. And and how awesome that show was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how how big he got like after that he was huge of course but after that everyone knew who he was. Yeah. I feel like that's gonna be the next step in in radio, for sure. Like creating like the radio television show. They also have that they do that on Seacrest too. Yeah. They're actually trying to do, they're trying to do some stuff and work around that with that with different shows, like yeah. national shows and stuff like that. Because you see, because you think about it, like even that, that Breakfast Club thing with uh, that's in New York. Yeah. You gotta have that visual now. It's like the visual. You gotta have the visual and the, and you gotta see it, but you gotta because people want to see stuff. Now. Yeah, like they want to see you in the studio, right? We do a show like that on Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah. So we do a lot of show in the podcast. See. Yeah. What is it called? It's called the D-Stone Pony Show. I'll show it to you, like, yeah. Nice. It's pretty hot, it's pretty hot. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, that's what's gonna happen. Like that's what it's gonna happen. I actually think that's really helping us because it's helping us, like, even, like, social media, because we talk about it today, because it's gonna help your brand. Mm -hmm. The more you put, the more episodes, and they, they're gonna be, you know, you, you, it's, they're gotta be, you want it to be good. Mm -hmm. And so you don't, you can't get, all the stuff, they just talk about the flaws and, like, the podcast, you gotta make sure all that stuff is right, especially in Chicago, and they're kind of market like this. Because if you don't, people will tear you apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's crazy because Chicago has so many amazing radio stations, yeah. and and the thing is, they're just they're just lacking. Like I'm sure you read Rubber Feeder, and you see those all the time. You see those rankings and stuff like that. And it's like, well, this why is WPBM always doing so mm -hmm. freaking well? It's because they do the news, and that's good for radio. But I feel like once they do the video component to all these other shows right. that are lower down the rankings, they're gonna get blasted up. Like. If like Eric and Kathy do, can you imagine if Eric and Kathy if you if they were being filmed? Yeah, it would be something totally different. I I know. Yeah, I know. I don't know if they'd be. Yeah, who knows? I mean, but it would still be them, Eric and Kathy. But it, it would probably really be good. Yeah, it yeah. would. They do that. They do this like thirty second or sixty seconds of the show over at um at the mix, and it's it's there that but it's like so small and that right. could be so big. So big, I mean. especially in Chicago. When yes. you do a podcast, is it better to have like one focus? Like, if you're news, you're news. If you're entertainment news, you're entertainment news. Or if you're music, just music and having artists. Or is it good to kind of bring them all together? Like, just talk about everything that's happening, kind of in that maybe that week. Like, if you do one once a week, like whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's an interesting question. Right now, with what we do on, at WGN Plus is we have everything segmented. We have like entertainment, okay, music, right. um, business, lifestyle, and, and what, did I say entertainment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have everything segmented that way and really specific. But there's shows, uh, and that's the best way to reach that niche audience because you are going to look for those specific podcasts. Right. But there are shows like Adam Carolla, uh, who just talks about everything. Oh, he has a new right. segment, um, um, like a music portion when he, have guests, he has guests on. Talks about documentary film all the time. So it really depends on what you're going for. But if you were starting out with a podcast, I'd say definitely start with what you know, what, okay. you, what you love. Okay. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, they're, they're interested love these. Seeing this kind of, seeing how you guys do things, how would they go about requesting that? What was that? If students wanted to see how you guys do things over there, is there is that possible? Like, yeah. Can you request, like, can we come check it out? Yeah, of course. We always have people shadow um, over at W Chan. If you guys want, like, um, come on over or send us send us an email. We'd be more than happy to to have uh, you come and join it because it's it's a pretty cool station. I mean, it's been around for a zillion years and. And we have the, the whole fishbowl studio and everything, so yeah, nice. Who yeah. should we email? <laughs> I can hand out a, a few cards after, after this. Yeah, it's a soldier who's done it. All right. Birth given name. <laughs> Good question. Um, yes. So when you're when you're setting up an interview with an artist, how do you go about, do you go through like their PR or like, um, not only that, are they kind of turned off by the fact that it's not going to be on air as it would like a radio station? Hell no! No? Of course! <laughs> right. That's a great question. That is, I wish somebody would, I wish somebody would have given me an answer to that question when I was starting this podcast. Because it really was annoying to get them uh, on there. Right. If, you're, if you're passionate about your show, and if you write a, a, a well-worded email, anyone will say yes. Because you, you're going to find it totally astonishing how easy it is to talk to your heroes and, and your these famous people just by asking. The, the, like one of the first slides, you, don't be afraid to ask questions. Because what are you gonna get? A no from Lady Gaga? Who cares? <laughs> but you can, get, like, you can get a yes from the Growlers and stuff like that. Hmm. I, I probably send out, if, I, if when I knew Lala Flores was coming to town, I sent out maybe 100 emails to, to artists. And I, I got maybe four interviews. But the thing is, you're gonna hear no it a thousand times, and if you once you get rid of the first hundred, you're gonna be fine. So yeah, just reach out to them. I mean, I went through, I go through their PR people, or I've even gotten uh, people on Twitter. Like uh, there's a band called The Academy Is. Oh. Who's uh? I know who that is. <laughs> you? Yeah. They're awesome, right? That was a like old time band. I forgot they existed, but yeah, they're cool. I like them. <laughs> Me too. Well, they just they just came to Chicago for their 10 year anniversary. And all I did was send, I sent William back at the lead singer a, a tweet. And he's like, yeah, of course I'll do it. And we got him on the show. Wow. Yeah, so it's all about just, and, and also, if you have any kind of way to contact them, Twitter, Facebook, mm -hmm. everything, do it all. Because at the end of the day, you'll get a no, and then you'll forget about it in an hour. So that's it. Cool. Hi, I'm Michael Heideman. I'm a producer with WGN Radio in Chicago. I just spoke to a class at the Illinois Media School and it was terrific. The class was engaging and I really enjoyed my time here today.